Did you know that Laravel ships with a markdown parser out of the box? Why don't we play around with that for a little bit? Here I have a fresh install of Laravel. And if I go to my routes file, the home page loads a welcome view. And this is what I have to get us going. Okay, so I'd like to set up a grid here where on the page on the left side will be a big text area where you can type some markdown. And as you type into it, on the right side, we will dynamically display the HTML rendered version of that markdown. Okay, so if I want a grid here, I'd rather use Tailwind to make this quick. So I will pull that in through a CDN. And then I can say, for this div parent, I want a grid that is two columns. And then maybe I'll add a little space between each of the items on the left and right. Okay, so here's the left side and here's the right side. So here we'll set up our text area and I'll give it an ID of markdown, okay? And then, yeah, on the right side here will be, I'll have another div. This will be our rendered HTML. Okay, now I do want some borders around these. So let's do a class of border on both items, and then we'll have a look at this in the browser. Okay, so here's what we currently get. Clearly, we have a little bit of work to do. Uh, first up, I want this height to be the full height of the window. So here I can just say height screen. There we go. Notice here's the bottom right edge of the text area. Let's tell it to take up the full width and height of its container. There we go. So now I can start typing into it. But if you don't mind, don't beat me up, but I'm gonna hide that outline. Yeah, so as you can imagine, as I type in here, we want to occasionally make an Ajax request to the server. The server will convert this markdown to HTML, and then we will display that rendered HTML to the right. Okay, let's get going. So right down here, again, we're not using any kind of JavaScript framework. We'll keep this as vanilla as we can. So first up, I'm gonna set up a convert function. So this will handle converting the markdown to HTML through an Ajax request. Now, if you want, we could use the fetch API, um, but I think most people on this site will be a little more comfortable with Axios. So why don't we pull that in through a CDN and this will just feel a little more familiar to you maybe. Okay, so we're gonna make a post request to, and again, we don't have much of an app here, so I will listen from the home page. So we need to pass through the markdown and we'll grab that here. So the markdown will be the value of this text area. So I'll say document.query selector, look for markdown, and then grab the value of that text area. And then we will pass that as part of our Axios request. When we're done, we will receive a response. And all I'm gonna do uh, to get us going here is log that to the console, and then we'll go from there. So we come back, open up console. I will say convert and it fails, but of course it did, we expected this. So we tried to submit a post request to the home page, but we get a 405, and that's because we're not listening for a post request to the home page yet. So let's do that now. We will say right down here, listen for a post request, and this is gonna be really easy. So our markdown will be in the request, right? And have a look at this. I could always say string, I'm gonna use illuminate support string of, markdown, so we now have a new stringable instance, and I can convert it to HTML by calling the markdown method. And that's it, Laravel will take care of the rest. So in fact, we could inline that variable, and now you get the idea. And if you wanna have a look at this, this is again on the stringable instance, convert GitHub flavored markdown into HTML. It ships right out of the box with Laravel. Okay, so now, Let's give this another run. I will call convert. And here's the response. And real quick, you can see in the network tab. Right here, we made a post request. We included the markdown here. And then in response, we got the HTML there. But specifically, if you wanna see that response object, it's right here. So now we can say response, give me that data there. Cool. So let's go back to our welcome view, scroll down to the bottom, and we can say set the inner HTML of this div, so document.query selector HTML, 
and then we'll set the inner HTML equal to response.data. Okay, come back to Firefox, give it a refresh, manually call that function, and there you go. Now it doesn't look like it's working, but if we have a look right here, we can see that's an H1. We just have to style it. Now here's something kind of cool. Uh, if you use Tailwind, they have a prose plugin, which gives you just some nicely uh, formatted prose for, for HTML that you don't necessarily control, like user content or blog content or stuff like that. So you'll see here, I am pulling in Tailwind through a CDN. I'm gonna pull that plugin through a CDN as well. And I have a little snippet here. Yeah, and of course you can find instructions for this on Tailwind's website as well. Okay, so now to activate this, I just need to give it a class of pros. Okay, come back to Firefox, give it a refresh, call that function again. And now, if I select this, you'll see we do have uh, some initial styling here. Okay, so let's do it again. Um, this is a paragraph. Here is a quote. And then one item here, another item there. Okay, let's call the convert function. And you can see really how incredibly easy this is. Okay, so we still have a few more things to do though. I'm gonna copy this so I don't have to retype it later, but I would like a little spacing around the edges here. For each of our grid items, maybe padding two. And if I give it a refresh, yeah, we just have a little bit more breathing room. Okay, but next, as I type here, I would want this to automatically update on the fly. So we could, of course, listen for a key down event. We could throttle it or debounce it. But to keep things nice and simple, I'm just going to run an interval. So let's say, uh, let's create our init script. And we'll set an interval where we run the convert function. And to start, we'll say something like, every two seconds, I want you to call this function. All right, so I will call our init function and uh, let's give it a shot. Refresh, hello world. And notice every two seconds we get an update. Kind of cool. Here is a block quote. Pretty cool. But now what if I accidentally close out my tab and I bring it back really quick, but too late, we've lost everything. Okay, why don't we leverage local storage? to provide a little protection there. Now, local storage is a native API, so we don't have to download anything to use it. So I think we can update local storage maybe every time we call the convert function. I can say local storage dot set item, let's just call it markdown, like so. So throw into local storage whatever is currently in the text area. And then what we'll do as part of our init function is we'll look into local storage. So remember, this init function is only called once. So right when the page loads, let's see if there is anything for markdown. And that will either return what's saved to local storage or null. So why don't we set the result of that equal to the default value of this text area here? Okay. Okay, so document.query selector markdown, set the value equal to whatever is returned from that local storage check there. So we set the initial value, then we set up an interval where we convert every two seconds. Now, while we're here, I do see a touch of duplication, not a big deal, but why don't we extract this to a little helper? We'll call it markdown text area. And that's just gonna delegate here. Just a little helper. There we go. Okay, so think about it. When the page loads, we call our init function. That will set the initial value of the text area equal to anything that might be in local storage for markdown. Then we set up a interval every two seconds, no matter what, uh, make an Ajax request to the server. That's what this function does. Grab the current value, pass it as part of an Ajax request. Then when you get the converted response, update the HTML with that new response. And then while you're here, you can pull this out of the convert function if you want, uh, if you think it's doing too many things, but it's okay for now. Uh, when you're done, 
or actually not when you're done, but as part of this call, we will save the current markdown value to local storage. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Give it a refresh. I'll paste in what we had before. And now if I go into the storage tab, we can see for local storage, we are saving this markdown. So if we update the heading, you can see every time we perform that call, we cache it effectively. So now think about it. Accidentally close this tab, and then I reopen Firefox. Notice we grabbed it out of local storage, so we didn't lose anything we worked on.